And we're back. Hey everybody, I'm Eric, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at building a base body for your characters. If you're not familiar with what a base body is, the premise is pretty simple. It's a mesh in the shape of a body that you can use to kickstart your projects. And there is pros and cons to that. The obvious pro is that it kickstarts your project. It's super fast. You don't have to start from scratch. The con is that if it's too specific, your projects risk looking the same, or you risk having anatomical errors in your base body that carry over from project to project and you're not correcting them. And so the thing about a base body and the way I look at base bodies is they are an evolving asset that kind of changes over time. And every so often, maybe you make a new one from scratch. And so I haven't made a base body in a while, so I wanted a new one for stylized characters. And so I'm gonna show you my process over the next couple of videos building a base body. This video is going to be sculpting that base body. The next video, we're gonna do the hands and feet because those are so detailed, they kind of need their own video. And then we're gonna do the retopo and the UVs in a video after that. So a couple of video series, but today we're just gonna sculpt it. I'm gonna talk you through my process, a little bit about anatomy and a little bit about just sculpting in general. And by the end, we should have a pretty complete asset, minus hands and feet. So why don't we go ahead and jump in? So if you're not used to sculpting anatomy or just blocking out characters in ZBrush in general, it's always good to think about characters and shapes. So instead of being intimidated by the entire overall shape of a character and how complex the anatomy and musculature is, try to look at all the different shapes. And so you can think about all of the major muscle groups as these forms that can kind of help guide you. And then all of those come together to create the body. And so a great exercise is to maybe just take a figure in Photoshop and just draw over it and try to find like major geometrical shapes that you can kind of simplify and think about their form. So, you know, you've got a lot of like cubes and simple cylinders and ovals that kind of come together to create those muscle groups. And then within those muscle groups, there's smaller muscles that uh, can you can dial in to really create the nuance and stuff to create a character. But this is a great exercise to just kind of start and figure out like, hey, where do I need to begin in terms of figuring out how to sculpt anatomy and figure out how to sculpt characters? And this also kind of helps you see the flow of a character as well, right? You can kind of see how those muscles lock together and create an interesting flow that's either more feminine or more masculine to help really sell the personality of your character. So jumping into sculpting, we sculpted the head in a couple of videos ago. So if you're interested in sculpting a stylized face, check out this video, I'll link it above somewhere. We're gonna use that as our base for the face. And then I'm going to insert a cube to begin sculpting the torso. And the way I like to build bodies is I start with the torso and then I add more and more primitives in to create the limbs. So first, I'm just gonna start with that cube. I use the move tool, the clay brush, and sometimes the damn standard to basically just flesh out basic shapes. And I'm looking at reference of females and female anatomy to kind of figure out what I wanna go with. And I know that this is stylized, and I know that I wanna create a stylized character, so it's important to find that line between believable and pushing those curves and those shapes. And so doing those exercises in Photoshop where you're kind of drawing gestures or just figuring out the gesture of muscle groups and shapes on a person can help you kind of translate how that might look in ZBrush. So the major muscle groups that I'm trying to get roughed out, and I'm not trying to make it perfect at this point because it's gonna change so much once I have the limbs and other, ass other body parts kind of plugged in, but obviously looking at the chest, the deltoids, the hips, the lats, which are these muscles that run along your outer back, just trying to get all those kind of in roughly so that I have what looks like a torso. It might not be great and it might have a lot of airs, but it at least helps us figure out where we can put our limbs, our legs, our arms, and that sort of thing. So once I'm happy enough with the torso, I go ahead and insert a cylinder. I'm going to place that cylinder roughly in the place of a arm and begin fleshing out the anatomy of the arm. And the arm's a pretty complex piece of anatomy because you've got tons of muscles to give us the amount of mobility and movement that we have in our hands. Um, and so it's really good to do that exercise and break up the forms where you can kind of see the shape of the bicep, the triceps and stuff, and definitely look at reference as you're beginning to block out arms. So you can see like me just plopping this stuff in, it looks really bad and it's gonna look bad for a while until I really study my reference and 
work on each muscle group and the shape and curvature of each muscle group. So the arm is broken up into a few core muscle groups. I would say six or seven. You know, you, some of them you can kind of group together. Some of them you can break up more granular. But you basically have the deltoid, the bicep, the triceps, the forearm, the upper and lower forearm. And then you also have some back muscles for that forearm too. Uh, I like to break the forearm up in the kind of like three shapes. You've got the two major shapes that run on both sides of the bicep. And then you've got a back shape but all of those get more granular. And so you can see here, just kind of those ma major muscle groups. And then once you kind of have those major muscle groups established, then you can start looking at the more specific forms that each one is broken up into. Like I mentioned, the triceps have multiple muscles and then even the forearm breaks into these multiple bands that run across your arm and create very unique anatomy based on the position of that arm. For me, that's a huge challenge area because the anatomy there is very, very unique and changes greatly based on the angle that you're looking at it and the angle that the arm is positioned. So keep that in mind. And then you also have the muscle, the chest muscle fibers and the way those run into the deltoid. So all of that kind of flows together to create the mechanism that is the arm. Uh, and, the, and the reason I bring this up is that you'll see a lot of people when they first start sculpting anatomy, they kind of create what's called bubble anatomy where you'll see like the outer curve of the arm and the adjacent uh, and the opposite curve of the arm are both just like out, like curves, like bubbles. And you really have to kind of stu study what those muscles are doing to begin to understand how those curves of those muscles should flow and how unique they are based on the, all the different areas of the arm and anatomy in general. Often you'll see when I'm sculpting, I'll over-exaggerate the muscles. I'll really carve them in. I use the damn standard to basically just carve in these really aggressive shapes so it looks like they have zero percent body fat but i'm really trying to get an understanding of where those muscles are sitting and then i'll go in and build more clay on top of it and i'll smooth it out and make them much more subtle but i like kind of being really aggressive with my forms at first and then kind of smoothing it out over time some people might work the opposite way where they kind of subtly build those forms in so there's no right or wrong way to work that's just how i've learned and how i prefer it um, but I'm also kind of changing and trying different things all the time. So it might not be how I sculpt forever. And it wasn't how I sculpted in the past, but it's kind of what I'm into right now. So that's just something to keep in mind. Everyone has different styles. For blocking in the legs, I like to kind of do it in three shapes, the upper leg, the lower leg, and then the uh, foot. And this way you kind of can really get the different unique curvatures of each part of the leg really baked in before you have to worry about the overall shape. And it lets you also kind of figure out where the knee sits and where the back of the knee sits, which is pretty cool. So I'm able to kind of just shove that lower leg geometry into the upper leg and really move it around pretty simple without having to sculpt too much and worry too much about uh, the geometry or the topology or anything like that. And that way I'm already kind of seeing like where the quad is resting above the inner knee and some of that stuff. And we've got the calves blocked out and you can really kind of see that unique curvature of the muscle and the uh, shape of the anatomy that comes across the upper leg. That's something that's really important. And the feet, the feet are really rough and 
I'll block in both feet and arms, kind of just as like blobs or fists. But until I'm actually ready to sculpt them, you might see me actually just lasso hide the feet and the arms because I feel like it's easier for me to visualize the body as I'm working on it with those just cut off rather than them looking really lumpy and really bad. I feel like having really bad feet and really bad arms on my mesh just throw the anatomy off for me. And so sometimes I'll just kind of cut those off until I'm ready to actually sculpt them because it just kind of throws me off. But everyone's going to be different. And, you know, going back to this idea of base bodies, having feet and having arms that you could just grab that maybe you just sculpt in isolation by themselves and you can bring into your projects and just put them on your characters saves you so much time. Um, but uh, hands are something I'm always improving and practicing. So I do kind of like doing them over and over again to just get practice because they're so unique and so difficult that uh, you're always learning something every time you do hands. And stylized ones too are interesting because it's always the question of like, how do you detail the knuckles? Is it a swirl or do you do like a, a cubic square? You know, it's always kind of challenging to figure out what kind of style to go with for those smaller details that you have on a human. Um, but yeah. And like I mentioned, we're going to go more in depth for the hands and feet in their own video, uh, just because there's not enough time. This video is already like 30 minutes long. I think you can see that what we're a halfway, less than halfway through the video, and we already have a full character blocked out. But the rest of this video is really just trying to get the anatomy and getting everything to work together and look believable uh, for our character. Now, very quickly, just to reiterate a couple points that we've been talking about, you know, that idea of really understanding the curvature on both sides of a piece of a, a anatomy. And so, right, like I said, a lot of times when you see people first start drawing or start drawing humans, they kind of create this bubble anatomy look where everything's sort of round and, you know, the front and back of a leg or front and back of an arm might have like the same kind of curve. But if you break it down to the muscles and the shapes of those muscles and how those come together, you can kind of start to understand the complete shape of a leg or an arm or a torso um, and you know you don't need to memorize the names of those muscles and know like exactly all the specifics but as long as you understand how those major muscle groups flow and how they flow into one each other and how they flow into one another you're going to be so far ahead in terms of having something that looks good and believable and then over time you can kind of work on the nuance of how those move when they deform or how these smaller muscle groups that or how these smaller muscles that make up those muscle groups subtly change the surface of even those larger forms. So learning anatomy is a journey. And the final result that I have in this video isn't perfect either, but I'm going to continue to improve on it and work on it and make small changes over time uh, and improve. And so that's really what we're talking about here. Another great thing to think about too is the flow and the gesture. You'll see animators talk about this a lot of times, right? Like a pose, making sure that it has a good line of action and a good flow. Um, but even in a body just standing in T-pose, there's flow. And you can draw, for example, a curve through the leg and kind of see the flow of that leg. And you can kind of see this flowy curve that goes back and forth through the whole body. And even a fully realistic character has a subtle line of action through them. And then it's up to you through stylization, how far you want to push that line of action based on your stylization. Um, I try to avoid pushing it so far that it looks like they're posing, like they're arching their back, you know, their shoulders back and pushing their hips forward in a really exaggerated way. You still kind of want it to look natural, but it's up to you to find that line for your character. Something you've probably heard before is that like idealized humans are usually eight heads tall. And that's kind of a way to scale your body in proportion with your head. Um, actual realistic humans, I think they say are like seven to seven and a half heads. And so this character is about seven heads tall. Um, I would say her body's a little small uh, or her he head is a little big based on how you want to think about it. And so... Uh, after this, I actually go ahead and scale the body up a little bit because I felt like it, it was just sort of off a touch. And I think scaling it up kind of just helps settle in the head on that shoulder width a bit better. The way you can do that is if you go to your move tool, you'll see on the right hand side, we have this little option to select multiple sub tools. And then you can basically control shift click 
all the tools that you want to hide or all the tools you want to show. And um, you can also invert your selection with control shift drag in empty space. But basically you want to hide the head and then scale everything else up a little bit or vice versa. It doesn't matter which way you want to work. I just scaled the body up a little bit. Uh, and I think that feels better. At this point, I'm basically just spending a little bit more time roughing in each of those major leg groups that I have before I dynamesh it all together as one complete mesh. And then from there, I can start really refining the anatomy and really focusing on specific areas. Now that everything is dynameshed together, I'm going to start actually working on the anatomy where those uh, sub tools were intersecting because there wasn't really the possibility to make a knee cap and stuff like that. So just blocking in the knee, blocking in the elbow, uh, and just kind of getting that stuff to flow a little bit better. And now I can also start getting those muscle groups to really flow in from one sub tool to the next sub tool uh, where they were previously. Now that they're merged together, it's much easier to work. And we can really start figuring out how those planes of those limbs change over the length of each uh, limb. So, you know, the arm, for example, on the bicep, you know, the bicep is really kind of a cylindrical shape facing you towards the camera if you're facing the character straight on. And then it gets flatter as you have the two forearm uh, muscle groups come in around the bicep and kind of really showcasing that planar change on the arm is what's going to help sell those muscle groups and making sure you really kind of get that down. As I continue to flesh things out, I also try not to lose sight of the overall shape. So you'll see me just grab the move tool, make the move tool really big and just straight up like move a chunk of the leg or move a chunk of the hips or something, trying to get that flow, that curve to feel good and feel right and feel natural. So I play with that a lot. Um, so, you know, if you're really getting like into the details of like the muscles and stuff, don't forget to step back and look at how everything's working together. Because even though maybe an individual muscle group or a bicep or something is looking really good, you pull back and suddenly something's way, way off. So keep that in mind. And uh, commonly also just make your character black, like just set your color to full black and just look at the silhouette. Because if the silhouette doesn't feel right and feel convincing, then it doesn't matter how much muscle sc anatomy sculpting and musculature you do, it's not gonna feel right. So make sure you always go back, look at that overall shape, and don't forget the overall feeling of the character because that's arguably more important than perfect anatomy on every small muscle group. And like I mentioned earlier, right at this stage, a halfway, a little bit more halfway through the video, we have a full character. Like the, the character is there, but now we have to spend just as much time really getting everything right and really getting the anatomy right. And this is where you need to look at reference and you need to really understand how to interpret the reference for the stylization of your character. So we're going for fairly stylized, but not like Disney Pixar levels, just kind of superhero-ish, uh, you know, Fortnite, Overwatch, those kind of things. So we're going kind of crazy, but uh, still want to ground it in reality and make sure that it is believable and the anatomy makes sense in a real world sense. We're just kind of pushing the curves of all of that anatomy a little bit more. The back is another really challenging area that you have to think about. There's a lot going on in terms of muscle groups. You've got the shoulder blades and then the lats and the muscles that all run up and down that create these really specific triangles or diamond shapes. Uh, and they change greatly based on person to person, based on fat content, based on pose. So definitely find um, some good reference. And for me, like um, I do do just a lot of straight up Googling for reference. You know, right? You can just Google like, oh, our musculature or like back anatomy or whatever. And sometimes you'll get good results. But I like I really like using Instagram uh, for reference. Maybe that sounds super weird or maybe that's kind of strange, but there's so many super fit influencers and like fitness people on Instagram that love posing in every way imaginable. And so you can just find somebody whose body type you like, and they probably have an entire Instagram page of like every pose of their arm and back and stuff. And so uh, we can use people's vanity to our advantage, I guess. Maybe that, that sounds terrible. I don't know, but it's, um, 
you know, it's it's a good reference. It's a, a good resource. I kind of wish you could get like larger images of Instagram on the computer, um, but usually they're good enough quality that you can kind of get what you need and figure out what you need. Um, also too, like if you go on ArtStation or various other sites, there's massive uh, just photo packs that people sell where it's like, here's a hundred pictures of uh, a bunch of different poses or, uh, you know, a bunch of different anatomy reference. So there's different ways you can get good reference, but just make sure you're getting reference uh, and you're making sure to kind of adhere to, you know, real principles. At this stage, I'm feeling fairly good about the overall feeling of the character. When I look at the character from the front, I feel like there's fairly good flow and some interesting curves. It's starting to look somewhat convincing, though I do need to continue to refine a lot of the more specific muscle groups. The side, I feel like it's still a little flat. Like I can tell just by looking at it, I want to continue to push maybe the curvature of say the hamstrings or the quads, uh, and maybe the calves, maybe accentuate the inward facing curve of the shin a little bit more, like just exaggerate the curvature from the profile view a little bit more, but we got to find that line where it goes too far, right? So we have to be careful. Um, and you'll see, I'm still not being afraid of making major changes. You can see here, I'm trying to push that uh, rib cage, just leaning back a little bit further to kind of just get a line of action through the chest. That's a bit more interesting, but try not to go too far where it looks like she's really posing or really forcing her shoulders back to get that. Um, I might've gone a little too far. It's not horrible, but uh, definitely something to keep in mind when you're doing this kind of stylization. You'll see too in my subtool palette, every so often I actually just duplicate my mesh and I keep those as like history markers, um, especially if I'm like, you know what, something over, something about the overall form just isn't working. I'm about to get drastic. I'll duplicate so that I can just make really big sweeping changes uh, or shoot in a completely different direction. And then I can toggle between those two subtools and kind of see where I was and where I'm at. And if I like this new direction that I'm going, or I can just go back and try something else. But um, sometimes I get hung up doing too small of changes. I'm like, oh, let me just adjust the ribcage a little bit more. Let me just bend the arm a little bit more, twist the form a little bit more. And I'm like sitting here doing centimeters when sometimes you just need to get like big and focus on the overall shape. So that's when I'll duplicate and then just like grab the arm and do something crazy with it or grab the arm and like really twist it or grab the legs and make them you know, a third longer or something like just really not being afraid to do desperate things where it's probably going to mess up a lot of what I sculpted. But if the direction's better, that's OK. I'll take that and then just re-sculpt. It's not a big deal. So, you know, you'll see like if I want to just grab, you know, the chest, the upper portion of the chest and really bend her back or bend her forward or I feel like the posture, the pose is wrong. Um, you know, that's an opportunity to do that.
Now, since this is a base body, right now I still have the head separate from the rest of the body. And uh, in this case, like in the last video, we had a isolated head where we gave it facial expressions and we put a lot of work into it. And so I'll duplicate that head and merge it onto this mesh, but it's not gonna have the facial expressions and stuff. It's just gonna kind of be a new head that's on this. And, um, you know, in a production sense, that's where it gets kind of complicated because uh, most of the time, you know, you're going to have clothes on your character and a seam where the neck is meeting the body is probably going to be covered by clothing of some sort. And so, you know, you're better off having a head that's its own mesh where you can have much, much more detail and geometry and polygons versus trying to get all of that baked into a full body. Uh, you're probably not going to have the resolution you need for uh, faces and facial expressions and stuff like that. So um, yeah, basically just duplicated a version of the head, merged it onto the body, uh, and that way we're pretty close. And you can see even just like the limbs and stuff, I'm trying to get pretty far before I dynamesh it together. So really getting in the collarbones and stuff, because um, I think in this case, I wanted to make sure that the necks lined up between my uh, independent subdual version of the face and then the one that I'm going to merge onto this character. I wanted to make sure that they looked alike. And um, you can always use projection between this version that we have on our base body and the version that we have isolated. So um, it's not like you're completely forking, but you have to remember that you're now maintaining two versions of a face if you need to work that way. But for the most part, you don't have to worry about stuff like that too often. Here's where I was talking about where the hands and the feet being kind of blobby were throwing me off in terms of trying to feel out the overall form of the character. And so I just isolate them because everything else is so much more refined at this point, but the arms and or the, the hands and the feet are just kind of like these blobs. And so it messes with my head more than helps. And so that's where I'll just isolate the wrists and the ankles and then kind of sculpt the body because I just can see things easier that way. And then eventually once I'm ready to add the arms and the, or add the hands and the feet, then we'll have to do some reworking. Um, and as you begin to refine things and refine forms and shapes at different at various parts of the body, it'll start making things that are wrong even more glaring. So as you kind of push the fidelity and push the polish of your character, certain things will stand out that you'll have to go back and rework. Corsos are an interesting one, especially like abs and the ribcage and stuff, because even if you took a lineup of people that are all the same build, like say a bunch of slender people uh, and line them all up, everyone's abs and everyone's torso is going to look slightly different. Like some people have, you know, wider abs. Some people have very, very narrow abs. And so there's not really a right or wrong. You just kind of have to feel out what feels right for your character. Like if you want them to be very slender and very slinky, or if you want them to kind of feel skinny, but uh, thick and substantial. So like it, it uh, kind of varies a lot and you'll see often I'll, I'll play with that. Um, for stylized characters, I kind of like to do this hourglass feeling to the abs where they kind of pinch in and then kind of fan back out. Um, it's not always the most correct, but uh, I think it does kind of give a nice shape. But I play with that a lot too to make sure that I'm not going too off the mark with it. Um, you'll see too, like here's a situation where I've kind of sculpted in the ribs, but by the end, I think I sort of smoothed that out. I just needed to kind of figure out the correct placement because I was having trouble visualizing certain areas there. Ultimately, in the end, I end up having her feet be much closer together because I noticed with the wide stance, I was having trouble kind of visualizing some of the anatomy around the ankle and the foot because, you know, if, if you're standing wide, your foot's kind of like turning in a little bit and it's not as straight of a line. And I was just having trouble sculpting that. So I decided to uh, kind of have her more um, standing straight and not wide stanced. And that helped me kind of figure out the feet because I was able to put a plane in and then make sure the feet were sitting flat on the plane. Um, and we'll probably go into that a bit more when we do the hands and feet video in the next video. But uh, yeah, that's why you kind of just see the change here. 
And here's where I ended up. Um, I think there's still some work and improvements I could do. Thinking about that, that kind of like forced feeling of the shoulder blades being pushed back, I feel like I might have gone a little too far on that. So there's definitely things I want to improve, but, but now we have a full body that we can use and kind of continue to improve and edit uh, to make our characters. So I think that's going to wrap this one up. Like I mentioned, in the next one, we're going to do the hands and the feet. And we'll also attach those hands and feet to the body so we kind of see the complete thing. In the video after that, we're going to do retopology. We're going to retopologize this whole thing into a lower poly mesh because that's kind of the whole point of a base body. It's not to have this highly sculpted mesh to use. It's to have a simple mesh that you can build on top of. So by having a low poly version of this, it'll be much more useful to us for future projects, which is awesome. Uh, hopefully we'll be back to a regular upload schedule. July was a little slow because uh, I was traveling quite a bit and I also took a new job this month. So just getting used to a new schedule and just trying to stay above water. So uh, kind of getting settled in there. So able to focus on YouTube again. Yeah, if you like this kind of content, please consider subscribing. If you have questions or just topics you would like me to cover, leave a comment in the comment section below. I'll try to get back to you and don't stop creating. Take care. I'll see you next time.